what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to write the names and the chemical formulas for ionic compounds. So do me a favor, start by writing this I can statement down. I can write the name and chemical formula of an ionic compound. We're going to do a few examples. Um, we'll start with this one on um, sodium and chlorine coming together to form an ionic compound. First thing I want you to remember is this right here. I want you to remember ionic compounds are compounds that are made up of metallic cations and non-metallic anions. So you're going to have to have a metal and a non-metal in order to have an ionic compound. So that's one thing we need to have um, up here. Now, another thing I want you to um, refresh your memory um, before we get started here is knowing how to figure out the ionic charge of our elements here. Okay? So just a little refresher. Um, I can determine the ionic charge of representative elements. Okay? So remember, you've got to be able to look at your periodic table, figure out how many valence electrons it has, and then is it going to lose valence electrons or is it going to gain valence electrons to complete its octet? So hopefully you can do that. That's a skill um, you have to have, and I'll give you a hint. We're going to warm up with that tomorrow. And also, one more thing. Way back when we did our element quizzes, um, we learned about some elements, some metals in particular, the transition metals that form variable ionic charges, meaning it varies. It can have more than one charge. So I need you to um, refresh yourself. What charges does iron form? What two charges does copper form? Tin and lead. Each one of these has two different charges that it can form. That's why it's called a variable charge. All right, so what we did um, in class earlier is we showed how many valence electrons sodium would have, one, and how many chlorine would have, Five, six, seven. And we figured out that the ratio of one sodium to one chlorine makes my sodium um, content with its octet and also chlorine. I'm going to show you an easier way to do this without having to draw those valence electrons. Okay. And here's what it's called. Oh, you're going to love this, um, this title. It's called the crisscross method. You know, you got to cross to the cross to the cross to the cross. important thing with the crisscross method is you have to be able to determine what charge your um, cations and anions have. Okay, That's the most important part of this. And I'm going to ignore that telephone in the background. They're going to have to leave a message. I get this later. Right. First step with the crisscross method. Step one, write down the charge for your cation and your anion. So in this case here, I'll keep this example, sodium and, and our chloride. Na forms a plus one, and I'm just going to write the one for now, even though we don't have to, because I want to show you something here. Same thing with my chlorine forming a negative one ion. So you have to be able to do this. Um, once you hear this part, it's really simple. So let's go to step two now. This is where we do our crisscross. We're going to crisscross the numbers on our charges. And 
what's going to happen is they're going to go down to the bottom of the opposite um, element, meaning that one goes down here by the chlorine. Chlorine's one goes down here by the sodium. Okay. And that's going to give us our ratio of one to one. Okay. I always add, I always get the question, what happens to the plus and minus here? You just ignore it. This isn't part of our formula. This is just like a, a cheating way to get our formulas without having to draw these electrons being transferred. So crisscross the number of each charge but ignore the pluses and the minus. Just ignore them. Okay, pretend like they don't even exist. And so what happens if you rewrite this, you have NaCl, one-to-one okay, -one ratio, just like you would have right up here. Now I have one more rule that we have to write down for doing the formulas with our crisscross method. If you can reduce the numbers down here, if there's a, a couple twos, Na2Cl2, um, we're going to have to reduce because our formula unit Our formula unit is the lowest whole number ratio um, of cations to anions, and so it's the lowest whole number ratio, so we might have to reduce um, if we can. Step three, reduce Necessary. Okay. Has to be the lowest whole number ratio possible for these numbers. And finally, to name these ionic compounds, it's a very simple rule and it's going to work every time. Even we add our little um, exceptions later on. It's, the rule is. be the name of the metal cation followed by the name of the non-metal anion. A couple more examples here besides just Na and Cl. Okay, which, by the way, for naming this, the name of this cation is sodium. The name of this anion is chloride. So the name of NaCl. This right here will form an ionic compound. So the first thing is we've got to write down our charge for each one of these. You need to know how to get to the fact that aluminum here is plus three and oxide here is going to be negative two. So now you go to your second um, step here. You're going to crisscross. Okay? Crisscross the numbers. Don't worry about the plus or minus. So this two ends 
ends up being by the aluminum. That means there's going to be two aluminums in this compound. And the three is going to end up coming down here. So there's going to be three oxides in this compound. So your new formula, Al2O3. And last example here. Calcium and let's do oxygen. Okay. Calcium a metal, oxygen a non-metal. This can definitely form an ionic compound. So we got to know, be able to do the charges. Calcium will form a plus two. Oxygen will form a minus two. So we crisscross those numbers here. The tubes go down there. Ca2O2, but here's the thing, this we can reduce because we got a common factor of the two. So the way we write this, CaO, one to one ratio here, that's the lowest whole number ratio in this ionic compound. So let's write the name now for Al2O3. Name of the cation is aluminum. Good luck. We're going to practice this very, very much tomorrow.